So in this video, we're going to go ahead and go over the problems that are in the unit 6 test review. So this first question has a perfect square equation, right? So remember, to solve a perfect square equation, what you're going to do is take the square root of both sides. So that's going to give me d plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 16. So that's telling me that d plus 5 equals plus or minus 4. I can now separate this into two equations. So I have d plus 5 equals 4 and d plus 5 equals negative 4. And I can solve now these two equations by subtracting 5 from both sides. So on the left side, that's going to give me d equals 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. On the right side, if I subtract 5 from both sides, that's going to give me d equals negative 9. So that's going to be my second solution. So now let's go ahead and solve 2x squared plus 2x equals 24. So remember, whenever you're solving quadratics, you want them to be in standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So in order to set this equation equal to 0, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 24 from both sides. So when I subtract 24 from both sides, I get 2x squared plus 2x minus 24 equals 0. So whenever you're solving a quadratic, you always want to check for a GCF. Notice that every single term in this expression is actually divisible by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 2, and that means I'm going to divide all of these terms by 2. So I have 2 times 2x squared over 2 is just x squared. 2x over 2 is just going to be plus 1x, so that's just plus x. Minus 24 over 2 is going to be minus 12, and that's equal to 0. So now what I can do is actually I can divide both sides by 2, and that's just going to leave me with x squared plus x minus 12 equals 0. So you can now solve this quadratic using the quadratic formula. You can graph it. Um, but I actually prefer to solve by factoring, and this will actually factor into x plus 4 times x minus 3. So if x plus 4 times x minus 3 equals 0, that means that either x plus 4 equals 0, which means that x equals negative 4, or that means that x minus 3 equals 0, which actually gives me x equals 3. So those are going to be my two solutions. So now let's go ahead and solve this quadratic for x. So if you try to factor this one, it actually doesn't factor, but it's already in standard form. So a is going to be 1 because x squared doesn't have a coefficient, so remember that's an implied coefficient of 1. Um, b is negative 4 and c is 13. But remember, it's always a good idea to just list them out whenever we're solving using the quadratic formula. So I'm going to go ahead and plug into the formula. So I have x equals negative b, so negative of negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 13. And that's all being divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. So let's go ahead and simplify this now. So we have x equals negative negative 4, which is 4, plus or minus the square root of, and then 4 squared is 16. So we have 16 minus 4 times 13. So we have 16 minus 4 times 13, which is 52, and that's all divided by 2. So if we simplify this more now, we have x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 36 over 2. Well, the square root of negative 36, that is going to turn into an imaginary number, right? Because that's the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1. Square root of 36 is 6, square root of negative 1 is i, so that's actually going to turn into 6i. So we have x equals 4 plus or minus 6i over 2. Remember now we can reduce this because this is like 4 over 2 plus or minus 6i over 2. 4 over 2 is 2, and then we have plus or minus 6i over 2, which is 3i. So we have x equals 2 plus or minus 3i. So this problem here is actually kind of interesting because it sort of ties into what we talked about with completing the square. So if you look at this left side right here, notice that it's a perfect square trinomial, right? So it's like x squared plus 2 times 6 times x plus 6 squared. So I can actually turn this into x plus 6 squared. And if you actually expand that out, you'll notice that that is equal. So I can actually turn this into a perfect square equation, and that's going to make it a lot easier to go ahead and solve. You can, if you want to, turn it into standard form and then solve using the quadratic formula. You'll still get the same answer. But I just wanted to show you this method because it's actually a little bit quicker. So if we take the square root of both sides, we get x plus 6 equals plus or minus the square root of 75. Well, the square root of 75 is one of those radicals that we can actually make better, right? The square root of 75, remember, we want to factor out the biggest perfect square that evenly divides 75. So we have the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. The square root of 25 is 5, so we have 5 times the square root of 3. So this is going to become x plus 6 equals plus or minus 5 times the square root of 3. So what I can do now to solve here to get x by itself is subtract 6 from both sides. 
So if I subtract 6 from both sides, I'm going to get x equals negative 6 plus or minus 5 square root of 3. And that is actually the fully simplified answer. And you'll get the same answer even if you use the quadratic formula. Okay, so in this problem, it asks us to write the equation of the parabola that curves up, has a vertex at 2, negative 3, and passes through 6, 1. So if it curves up, we know it's going to be a vertical parabola, right? So the equation is going to be y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. How did I know to use vertex form? Well, it gave me the coordinates of the vertex. So anytime you have the coordinates of the vertex, you actually want to use vertex form. So the coordinates of this vertex are going to be h, k, and remember that this 6, 1 is giving me an x and y value. So let's go ahead and plug this all in into our equation. So I have y equals 1, and then I don't know the value of a. I have x, which is 6, minus h, which is 2, and then that's squared, and then I have plus the value of k, which is negative 3. So now let's simplify this. So I'm going to actually use order of operations to simplify. I have 1 equals, and I'm going to work with the parentheses first. So 6 minus 2 gives me 4. I have 4 squared, and then plus negative 3 will become minus 3. So that's 1 equals 4 squared is 16, so that's 16a minus 3. Now what I can do to solve, because I want to get a by itself, I'm going to go ahead and add 3 to both sides of my equation. When I add 3 to both sides, I get 4 equals 16a, and then I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 16. So when I divide both sides by 16, I get 4 over 16 equals a. Well, 4 over 16, you don't want to leave it as a fraction like that, right? We want to reduce it, so that's going to become 1 over 4 equals a. So once you have the values of a and then you have h and k, you want to plug back into this original equation to write the equation of your function. So we're going to call it y equals, and then a, we're going to substitute 1 fourth, and then we have x minus h, which is 2 squared, and then plus k, so that's going to be plus negative 3, which I can just write as minus 3. So that is the equation of this parabola. Okay, so in this one, it wants you to write the equation of the quadratic function that passes through three points. Anytime you have three points, you want to do a regression like the screenshot I have in Desmos, okay? Remember what you're going to do is you're going to set up your x, y table using these points. So you have negative 2, 24, 1, 9, and then 2, 12. Um, remember, you want to use this plus sign to create the table um, and then go ahead and type in the values and then type in this equation. So it gives you the values of a, b, and c, which are 2, negative 3, and 10. Once you have those values, you just plug into standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. So that's going to be y equals 2x squared and then plus negative 3x plus 10. Plus negative, I'm just going to go ahead and combine and turn into a subtraction sign. So I have 2x squared minus 3x plus 10. And that is the equation of this parabola. Okay, so now this one, it wants us to convert this equation um, to vertex form. So notice this is in standard form, right? This is in y equals ax squared plus bx plus c form. Um, in order to convert it to vertex form, I'm just going to remind you of what that is. That's y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Um, I'm going to actually need to use completing the square. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. I have y equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 23. Remember, the first thing I want to do is I want to subtract both sides by 23 so I can just move it over to the other side. So I have y minus 23 equals 2x squared minus 12x. So I want my x squared to have not like no coefficient in front of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out that 2. So like I'm going to write, write this as 2 times x squared minus 6x. And how I got from here to here is I basically just divided both of these by 2 and then put that 2 in front. So I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room here because you guys know I need to now complete the square. So to figure out the number that goes here, I'm going to look at this value 6, which is b, right? So I remember I need to take b over 2 and then square it. So this is going to be negative 6 over 2 squared. Well, negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is equal to 9. So I'm going to add 9 here. Well, remember, I didn't just add a regular 9. This 9 actually has a coefficient of 2 in front of it, right? Because the 2 distributes to all these terms. So I actually technically added 2 times 9. Well, the property of equality says that if I do something on one side of my equation, I have to do the same thing on the other. So I need to add 2 times 9 on the left side in order to balance both sides out. So when I simplify this now, I'm going to get y minus 23 plus 18, right? Well, minus 23 plus 18 is just going to become y minus 5, and that's equal to 2 times x squared minus 6x plus 9. Well, what I've done here in completing the squares, I've converted this into a perfect square trinomial that can be x plus b over 2 squared. 
Well, I know that b over 2 is equal to negative 3, so I have x minus 3 squared. So I can actually rewrite this as y minus 5 equals 2 times x minus 3 squared. The final step is now to get y by itself, and I can do that by adding 5 to both sides of my equation. When I add 5 to both sides of my equation, I'm going to get my final answer, which is y equals 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 5. And that is now my equation in vertex form. Okay, so here it asks you what number should be added to the expression x squared plus 16x to change it to a perfect squared trinomial. Whenever we're thinking about this, we always want to look at the value of b. Because remember, the formula that we need is b over 2 squared. So in this case, b is 16, so we do 16 over 2 and then square it. 16 over 2 is 8, and then 8 squared is equal to 64. So what I need to actually add here is a 64 in order to turn it into a perfect square trinomial. So now let's try solving the equation 3x squared equals x plus 14. Once again, notice that this is not in standard form, right? This is not in ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 form. So I need to go ahead and do that, and I can do it by subtracting x and subtracting 14 from both sides of my equation. So when I do that, I'm going to get 3x squared minus x minus 14 equals 0. So the value of a is 3, minus x, well, like that minus 1 is going to be b, and then minus 14 is c. So I have a equals 3, b equals negative 1, and c equals negative 14. So let's go ahead now and plug into the quadratic formula. So we have x equals negative, negative 1, plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 14. And that's all going to be divided by 2 times 3. So we have x equals negative, negative 1. So that's 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared is 1. And then we have minus 4 times 3 times negative 14. Well, 4 times 3 times negative 14 is negative 168. So we're like doing 1 minus negative 168, which will just turn into a plus. And that's all over 2 times 3, which is 6. So that's going to give me x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 169 over 6. So that's going to become 1 plus or minus 13 over 6. So now I can separate this into two parts to get my two solutions. So I have 1 plus 13 over 6 and 1 minus 13 over 6. 1 plus 13 is 14, so I have 14 over 6, which is equal to 7 over 3. 1 minus 13 is negative 12, so I have negative 12 over 6, which is negative 2. So we have two solutions now. We have x equals 7 over 3, and we also have x equals negative 2. So that's going to be the two solutions to this quadratic equation. So now let's try solving this system of equations. So this is a nonlinear system, but both of these are in y equals form. So you can actually solve this by graphing if you'd like to do so. Um, you're just going to graph both of these and then look for the points of intersection. Um, I'm going to show you how to solve this also algebraically because what you can do is you can set these two equal to each other because they're both equal to y. So we can go ahead and write this as 3x minus 4 equals x squared plus 4x minus 10. Well, remember, we need to go ahead and set this equal to 0, so I'm going to subtract 3x and add 4 to both sides. So I'm going to do minus 3x and then plus 4. So when I do that, on the left side, I'm going to do 0, and that's equal to x squared. And then 4x minus 3x is just going to be plus x, and then minus 10 plus 4 is going to be minus 6. So like I said before, my favorite way to solve is actually to factor. So this is going to turn into x plus 3 times x minus 2. So that's going to give me two equations, x plus 3 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0, which gives me two solutions, which are x equals negative 3 and then x equals 2. Well, remember, when we're solving a system of equations, our solutions are actually going to be points. So once I find these two points, I need to go back and plug in, and I'm going to choose to plug into the linear equation because I think it'll be quicker, um, and that's going to give us the values of y. So for x equals negative 3, we have 3 times negative 3 minus 4, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 minus 4 is equal to negative 13. So that's going to give us the point negative 3, negative 13. Um, if we go ahead and plug in x equals 2, we have 3 times 2 minus 4. So that's 6 minus 4, which is equal to 2. So that's going to give us the second point, which is 2, and then we have 2. Okay, so these are going to be the two solutions to this system.